Hey there, book people. Long time no chat. These all came in the mail today. I recently fell in love with this book website called alibris.com, and it is a site that I use actually for work a lot because they have a little bit of everything, but they are especially strong in obscure or old and rare art history books. Think exhibition catalogs for shows at tiny museums 70 years ago. Using the site frequently, I learned that they also have a great stash of 99 cent books. Since it feeds from a whole bunch of independent booksellers, um, the 99 cent books are actually good books. Or in the case of half the books that I ordered this time, they're all things that I've tried to read before from libraries and then just never had time to finish. So obviously it's just easier to have them on my bookshelf where there's no due dates and no late fees. Here they are in no order. The first one is Rosemary Mahoney's Hordem and Kimmage. This is a book that I uh, studied an essay in for contemporary British literature class, I think this last year. Honestly, I don't even remember. And it is about the inner lives of Irish women, basically. Rosemary Mahoney is an Irish-American woman that journeys back to her home country to live amongst women there, and she just documents their interactions, the cultural differences, what it's like to be a woman living in a transatlantic community. You know, fun stuff like that. So that's a nonfiction book. I'm very excited to read it. I'm on a huge female memoir kick right now. Kind of a good follow-up, a fiction book. I have The Dud Avocado, finally! This is by Elaine Dundee, and this got, like, I don't know, I feel like this was reviewed a lot last year, and I won't lie, I'm kind of in it for the buzz. <laughs> I don't get on a lot of bandwagons, but with good literature, I hop on them. Toot toot. So this is, from what I, I don't know, the fact compared it to Edith Wharton, who you may or may not like, and like, I don't dislike Edith Wharton, so it's short and, again, some interesting people have had some interesting things to say about it, so I'll make my own decision soon. This was definitely an impulse. This is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It's like this super chunky little um, trade paperback. Donna Tartt, as we all know, wrote The Goldfinch. And here's the thing, I bought this even though I was extremely underwhelmed by The Goldfinch. Uh, short version, The Goldfinch is a 900 page book, about 400 pages of which is drug induced delirium. So I don't know, beautiful writing, I mean a really well written drug induced delirium, but I don't know what my expectations are for this, but I couldn't resist because I loved and hated The Goldfinch so much. and. I can't deny that she is a skillful writer. This is about a group of students that are at a prep school. It, I started this from the library once upon a time on my Kindle and the vibe I got was like kind of a dark dead poet society but remains to be seen. Okay to speed this up we also have um, an old favorite of mine. Jesse Ball is one of my all-time favorite authors. He has not written a whole lot, but he was the first author that I really fell in love with and that reminded me why I did contemporary literature. He is a magic realist American author and this is his book Same Day the Deafness, which to be totally honest, um, I know nothing about <laughs> except that I enjoyed his other books. What up? So Michael Chabon, can't go wrong. I don't think I own any other Michael Chabon. Telegraph Avenue is Michael Chabon. Just kidding. This one I've actually read, again, part of, and really liked. Oh, Yiddish Policeman's Union? I don't do well with, like, gory crime stuff, and this is just kind of whimsical, so. Alright, living in the American heartland and being um, a post-grad lover of literature. I know, I know. Roll your eyes if you must, if you're snobby. Um, but I am digging into some Jonathan Franzen. Um, I've picked up and put down Freedom a bunch of times. There's just something about it that seems, I don't know, snarky to me. But what do I know? I haven't read Franzen yet. So we're gonna read this one. It's about a family, multi-generational family. Everyone's moving and shaking and changing and aging and what have you. I won't lie, I'm pretty pumped. Last but not least, this book is so weird it's like too good to be true. It totally is. I saw this at um, an indie bookstore in St. Louis like five years ago and I put it down and then I could never find it again. Thank you, alibris.com. First, let's just get a good uh, look at the cover. All right. Oops, there we go. Moby Duck. By now, 
actually, you don't know how much I love Moby Dick. I love Moby Dick. Plot twist. <laughs> Best read of last year. The title of this book is Moby Duck, the true story of 28,800 bath toys lost at sea and of the beachcombers, oceanographers, environmentalists, and fools, including this author who went in search of them. How could I not? 99 cents. Thank you, internet. So this is what I'm starting 2015 off with, and we're going to stick them somewhere in this mess, and I'm going to read them. And this time, I'm actually going to read them and tell you about them, because we're doing bedtime book stuff in 2015. So let me know what books you have adopted into a loving home recently. Until next time, bye!